Welcome back, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and I'm excited to share part three of the three-part series I have on verifying refrigerant charge. This was a training I provided to my Patreon members one year ago. And for part three, we're gonna talk about the ANSI, ACA, ResNet, and ICC standard that was released on grading HVAC installations and the non-invasive way of verifying refrigerant charge. So without further ado, here's part three. Just came out in 2020. That's where they're gonna evaluate single and two family residential homes. He pumps up uh, up to six tons, right? Furnaces up to 125K. And the purpose of this is really just to support consistency when they're doing an energy rating in order to say that yes, this system was designed right and commissioned correctly. Really easy, if you're gonna do superheat and subcooling, um, if you have onboard diagnostics or um, you get independent verification, that's a grade one. That's the best you can get when it comes to refrigerant charge when you're talking about that rating, okay? So you can do everything we just talked about, set everything up, third party comes out, does the testing, or you can print it off if you have onboard diagnostics and call it a day, okay? If you don't, there is a non-invasive verification way of doing this, okay? And the energy rater can do this because they don't have to hook up gauges. It's just temperatures across the board and they use normalized blower CFM. So they're just gonna measure a return air dry, dry bulb, wet bulb, condenser ring entering temperature, suction line temp, liquid line temp, and they used a normalized blower CFM based on your design. So that means you have to set up the system correctly based on the design of the system. If you designed it around 350 CFM per ton, then it needs to be set up for 350 CFM per ton. And when they do this testing, it needs to be running at full capacity. So in order to get your normalized CFM, you're gonna take your design CFM, divide it by the maximum total heat gain, right? So sensible plus latent is your total. So off of your manual J, once you divide that by each other, then you multiply it by 12,000, and that's gonna be your normalized CFM. And if that's below 375 CFM, your default delta T temperature difference, right, across that coil should be 40 degrees because you're running the airflow slow. Obviously, uh, if it's 375 to 425, your target's 35. If it's over 425, you're not gonna have a big temperature difference there. It's only gonna be 30, okay? Remember, we're not, it's not always a 20 degree delta T, okay? And there is some tolerances here, but that's the target that's gonna work the equation when we talk about verifying refrigerant charge without hooking up gauges. Now, I'm not advocating for this process. You should be adjusting and setting it up. You're an HVAC professional. You should be using superheat and subcooling. This is for people that are not HVAC professionals to have some way to say that that guy knew what he was doing, all right? Because if you never set the system up, let's say you have a, uh, a blower motor that has a three and a half to five ton drive and it comes set for five tons and you hooked up a three and a half ton condenser, no wonders, you're way over 425 CFM per ton but you designed it for 350 per ton. That's obviously gonna cause some problems. So really important, you set up the system right, You adjust, so obviously you set the airflow first, then you adjust the charge correctly using superheat and subcooling. This math should work after that, okay? So if you have a uh, fixed metering device, right? Uh, what you're gonna be doing um, on this uh, testing is measuring the liquid line temperature and knowing your target suction line temp. So there's some charts in the book and based on your temperatures and your conditions that day, it's that's why you need to measure the outdoor, to outdoor air temp, right? Um, and your return air wet bulb. It's gonna tell you what the target should be and you're allowed a tolerance, okay? It's like plus or minus eight, you'll see in the next slide. There's plenty of tolerance there. This is just a quick check to make sure that it's in the ballpark. If you designed it and, and commissioned the system, it's gonna be in the ballpark. Um, obviously you have a TX valve or an EEV, you're gonna get the default condensing temperature over ambient. I ha always hated technicians that use this. How much should my head pressure be over the outdoor temperature? It used to drive me insane. So when I saw it in the standard, I said, oh God, here we go again. But then I've looked further into it. It's not for the technicians to set the system up. It's for verification purposes only. And then of course, they're gonna have a min and max suction line temp and the target liquid line temp, right? So really simple. If you have a fixed metering device, the temperature delta across uh, what it should be, if it's more than an eight degree difference, then it's grade one. If it's less than that or equal to, it's a grade two. If you have a TX valve, it's, it's above or below six, right? So it's really simple there. If it's way off, 
then obviously the charge or the re or the airflow is way off. This person, this energy raider or whoever's doing this testing should notify the HVAC contractor. Contractor should first should adjust the airflow, then adjust the refrigerant charge, right? Always airflow first. Set up the blower first, then adjust the charge. All right, obviously weighing in really easy. <laughs> you just weigh the system in, right? But in order for it to count under the standard, you need to have a photograph of the scale. You also need to actually document the total weight that's added or removed from the system. And that photograph of the scale, once you have it done and you added the right amount of refrigerant, needs to be time stamped and geotagged. Of course, you're gonna measure the total length of the liquid line and adjust that, right? That's how everybody does their refrigerant weigh-in method, no matter what manufacturer you're working with, okay? It's obviously the outside diameter, so you're gonna to have to have some sort of caliper if you're verifying this and you don't know exactly the OD of, of the pipe. You're gonna to have to be able to measure that, obviously without insulation, so you pull the insulation back and measure it with the caliper. And you need to know the factory weight of the charge that's already in the system, so that way you can verify what was added is correct. And that is obviously uh, listed on the equipment and then in everybody's installation manuals, okay? Or service manuals if you're working with a lot of ductless systems like the one in the picture here. Do not pick up the can and shake that thing. You wouldn't believe how many times I see a technician do that. I, I laughed when I saw this picture, I had to put it in here. Don't do that. You should be using electronic gauges, right? When you're weighing in refrigerant as a liquid, using a scale, and then taking a picture, okay? And please, something I used to do on every system after I weighed it in, uh, write in how much was added with a permanent marker on the inside of that panel and the total weight. So you add the two together, what's in the system plus what you added to get total weight. Because if you think there's a refrigerant charge problem, you would weigh the refrigerant out and you would know really quickly before you, if you need to do a, a, a leakage test or not. Because if you weigh everything as it comes out and it matches what's written down, you know that there's no leak and you can put it back in, okay? So really important, write that stuff down on the system because most likely, let's be honest, you're probably not gonna be the next person back out there. It's gonna be another technician. Obviously, it's based on line length, outside diameter of the pipe. You're gonna calculate total charge and then of course, any sort of deviation, you need to be really close. Well, that concludes our three-part series on verifying refrigerant charge. What did you think? If you like these videos and you want access one year early, be sure to head over to my Patreon page where you can gain access to all of that content plus written blogs one year in advance for as little as eight dollars a month if you haven't yet subscribed to the free youtube content that i'm providing be sure to do so thanks again for joining me at hvac pro blog we provide advice for residential system design quality installation and system diagnosis i'll see you soon